Hello everyone! A little while ago, I did a video on the new mage follower Aether Sunreaver, and I touched a little bit on the Purge of Daladon, which led to somewhat of a discussion in the comments. I figured, what better reason than to actually dive deeper into Aether's storyline and see what he's been up to, so let's begin, shall we? Not much is known about Aves' history, where he came from, when exactly he was appointed as a member of the Council of Six, which left a lot open for speculation. Some even went as far as suggesting that Aves' Sunreaver was some form or reincarnation of Kilfer Sunstrider, but since we've seen Aves without his helmet on, it seems like that speculation has been debunked. What we do know is that one of the earliest stories that Aethos played a part in, that is in the story within the comic called Mage. Daladon is rebuilt after destruction caused by Archimand in Warcraft 3, and they lifted it off into the sky to aid the war against the Lich King in Northrends. The blue dragon aspect Melagos, he has come out of his insanity, and he realized that mortals of the world, they were abusing magic. He figured that none of them were worthy of this gift, so he decided to use the Focusing Iris to draw the magic of the world into the Nexus, so that only those who served him would have access to it. The journey to Northrend, it was not an easy trip, as this city itself found itself under attack by the Blue Dragonflight, and their leader Ronin, he tried to rally their defenses. Archmage Modera and Archmage Aphis, they're at the Violet Citadel, trying to maintain control of the overall counterattack on the beast, though some of the lesser magi, they're already at their limits. Spells were already harder to cast and keep functioning, all because of the magic being drained, but Avis was confident that they would hold. Alliance or Hordes, Magi were in the end Magi, and this was a struggle for their very calling, as well as their lives. The story then goes deeper into betrayal from within, trying to defend the city from the Blue Dragonflight attack, until they're eventually victorious, and they are able to complete their journey. Now dealing with Melagos and the Nexus War, while also focusing on the Lich King, that was quite a task, and Dalaran had its hands full. Avis believed that his people were the solution to this problem. Many times, he had requested an audience with Regent Lord Lorfmar, which he deliberately ignored. Finally, Aethos had enough, and he simply stated a date and time of arrival to discuss the Blood Elves rejoining the Kirentor in Dalaran. Lorfmar understood Aethos to be idealistic yet shrewd, and far too young for the position that he had carved for himself in Dalaran. Then again, most of the Elder Sindarai Magi were dead by this point. In the end, Lorfmar supposed that Aethos' ambitions that they were a good thing. At least someone among them still had hope. Aphis explained his attentions to them, that the Magi of Quelphalas and Dalaran, that they should work again side by side as they had done for many years in the past, yet Grand Magister Romuff, he thought that this was a very bad idea. Aphis shook his head. The Blue Dragon's Flight power and menace are far greater than even we first fought. I want to formalize our involvement with the Kiran Tor. It's imperative that the Magi of Quelphalas and Dalaran again work side by side as we had for many years in the past. You are blind. Romov replied, They bit off more than they can chew, and now they find themselves facing both Melagos and Arthas. They are afraid, as they should be. They need aid beyond their own capacity, and to whom have they always turned regarding matters of the arcane? Oh yes, to us. The members of the Kirentor will swear up and down that you're indispensable to them, that your skills are invaluable. The moment you become inconvenient, you will be discarded. He cocked his head to the side, one long ear twitching almost imperceptibly as his eyes slid first to Haldoran and then to Lorfmar. Ask them. They know, but not as well as I. Ava stared blankly back at Romav. Well, Velas and the Kirentor have been allied for over 2,000 years, he said. Since we joined formally with the Horde, things have been strained, but... Romov laughed again, loudly this time. Since we joined the Horde, he repeated. Of course, that's somewhat awkward, I imagine. And do you, Archmage Sunreaver, remember exactly why we sought to join the Horde? Aphis did not answer, but he looked Romov straight in the eye, unflinching. A monumental betrayal. Roma said, his voice nearly a whisper. His eyes glittered with seething anger that nearly a decade had failed to quell. In Dalaran, he continued, beneath the ever-watchful eyes of the Kirintor. Romav had not forgotten what had happened to the Prince Kilfa Sunstrider. He followed orders from Gerifos, impossible orders, which forced him to team up with the Naga, and for that, he was eventually placed in the prisons of Dalaran. How could I have let this happen to my brethren? Locked in these cells. Our thirst for magic will devour us. It'll all be over soon, traitor. Lord Gerethos plans to execute the lot of you at dawn. Sunrise can't get here fast enough. These elves give me the creeps. Don't worry. This prison was built by the Kirin Tor to keep their pets from getting loose. The elves' magic is useless inside those enchanted cells. 
the Cadentor simply left them to rot in their prisons beneath the city, which many of them called home as much as they did Silver Moon. A city within whose walls they would have watched in silence as they all swung from a hangman's noose. Of course, this fate was prevented by Lady Vash and the Naga, while Aphos now tries to convince them that the Cadentor is under new leadership. That's a lie, and you know it. Roma said, Ronin may be the figureheads, but Moderan and Serum remain on the council. They are the same people who happily turned their eyes away when Gerifo sentenced us to death. They can all rot in hell, or better yet, in Arsa's army as Scourge, he scoffed. The issue was put to the side for the moment. Lorfamar needed some time to deal with other issues until Sylvanas Windrunner showed up in their city. Arthas the Lich King had made his move on the world, he dared to attack the heart of the Horde in Orgrimmar, and it was time to take the battle to Northrend. The Banshee Queen ordered Lorfamar to aid them in this war, or she would pull her forces out of Quelphalas and leave the Blood Elves to fight for themselves. Lorfamar could not believe that she was making this ultimatum. They had just dealt with a civil war, some of their soldiers were still in the infirmities of Quel'Danas. They hadn't even had time to hold a proper service for the dead. But Sylvanas had already made up her mind. They would either send their exhausted people to find more death in Northrend, or risk losing Quelphalas to the Scourge once again. There was no choice here for Lorfmar, so he did as he was told, and Aethus' request was granted. Seeing how the Sindarai forces would be moving north anyways, Lorfmar expected that a lot of them would show up in Daladan. He told Aethus to find Romav, who would be a great use to him, and do what they could to aid their people. I suppose you should be pleased, Archmage. Lorfamar said, but Aethus shook his head. It is true, I wish to acquire your support in Northrend region, lords, but not on these terms. Believe me when I say, I would rather have seen you agree on your own free will, not because of- My free will remains intact, thank you. Lorfamar interrupted him again, smarting from the sting in Aethus' words. And it's still by my will that Quelphalus is ruled. Of course, my lords. Avis answered, bowing slightly in conciliation. But as he raised his head, Lorfamar could see that the apology did not extend to his eyes. Seething, Lorfamar turned on his heel and left him there, standing alone beneath laden banners of red and gold. Lorfamar knew full well that he had lied to Avis. His will was not his own, not while they were still relying on Sylvanas and the Forsaken to hold their claim of the land. Nonetheless, the Sun Reavers and the Hordes, they rejoined the Cadentor, and together they took on Malagos, Arthas, and any other threat that Northrend had to offer. In the end, Aves' plans of seeing his people back into the Cadentor, they were a massive success, yet not everyone was happy to see the Blood Elves join them. The opposite organization was called the Silver Covenant, which was led and formed by Varisa Windrunner. She had bad dealings in the past with Blood Elves, not to mention that the High Elves, who refused to suck magic from living things like vampires, were kicked out of their city. She did her best to work against the admission of Blood Elves within the Cadentor, but as we know, she failed. The winds of change eventually came to Azeroth, as Garrosh Hellscream was appointed War Chief of the Horde, and he pushed forward with his plans of conquering the world. They managed to steal the Focusing Iris from the Blue Dragonflight, a powerful magical device, which they had the Blood Elves use to fuel a massive mana bomb. The Horde was summoned by the War Chief to march upon Feramor, with the first stop being Northwatch Hold. Now Garrosh, he was very smart. He held his troops back, which gave Jaina the time to call in reinforcements for the defense of Feramor. The Alliance, the Blue Dragon Caligos, in search of the Focusing Iris, and even the Cadentor, they all decided to lend their aid. Jaina made a case to the Council of Six, which at the time consisted of Modera, Ronin, and Serum Runeweaver, Carlane, Ketgar, and none other than Avis Sunreaver. For all your years of diplomatic service, Jaina Proudmoore, said Avis in a silky voice, you know little of the Horde if you think they will stop when they see victory. Perhaps they will stop if they see Magi from the Cadentor. Please, there are families in Feramor. I will defend them with my life, as will my soldiers quartered there, but we may not be enough. And if Feramor falls, so well might Kalimdor. Nothing would then stop the Horde from attacking Ashenvale or Teldrassil and driving the Night Elves out of their ancient lands. Garrosh wishes the entire continent, and, with respect, that cannot possibly be what the Kinator wishes as a whole, not if it truly believes in neutrality. I am counting on your wisdom to see that this is not asking you to take sides, this is asking you to save innocent lives, and keep a balance that is already too tentative. The council took their time to vote, until Ronan told Jaina that while the Kirentor feel very strongly that they should remain impartial, her plea had moved them to action. Even Aethys Sunreaver voted in favor of rendering aid, it seems that to not assist her against such tremendous opposition, they would be technically supporting the Horde. At least, that's the logic that he used. The Kirentor's role was to protect and not make any offensive moves in the hope that their presence would serve as a deterrent and make the Horde reconsider. With Ronin came additional help, there were prominent members of the 
Kid and Tor, there were council members. And to Jane's surprise, there was also Talon's song weaver, a sun reaver, slender, sharp featured, and with hair the color of moonlight. I thank you from my heart for answering my call for aid. Mage Songweaver, I especially thank you for being here. The choice must have been difficult for you and Archmage Aphis. Not as much as you would think, said Songweaver in a husky pleasant voice. It was my lord Aphis who caused the deciding vote. Vedamore's troops were ready to defend against the Horde assault, but as Jaina and their forces worked on magically reinforcing the gates, she noticed something strange. The gates were shuddering under the pounding, and they shouldn't have been, not with a member of the Kid and Tor shoring them up with powerful magics. The timbers were bulging from the impact, and the hinges and metal bands, they were curling in on themselves. Jaina whirled, and with all her might, sent a massive blast of arcane energy directly at Talon's Songweaver. The Blood Elf turned out to be a traitor, working against the defense of Fedamore, and they decided to place him in prison for the time being. I can't believe it, Ronin muttered. I personally vouch for him to come. I am certain that he fooled many others than you, Jaina said. Indeed. Ronin said bitterly, this will be a blow to Avis and his cause. Do you think Talon acted alone? I do. Ronin said, because if I don't, the gate splintered, caught fire, and a horde rushed through. The unthinkable has happened. Our siege on Theramore has failed. You're the contingency plan. Your mission is to infiltrate Theramore Isle, burn their ships, butcher their flight master, sabotage their war machines, and rescue our spy. In the end, despite being betrayed from within, Fedomor was able to repel the attack and send the horde under retreat. Jaina thought that they had done it, that they were safe, but she was very wrong. My thanks. Shall we make our way off this miserable little island? The failed siege was merely a feint, of course. You didn't realize? Even now an airship draws near. Its arcane payload will flatten Theramore Isle and everyone still standing upon it. There we go. Should you pass through Silvermoon City, come and say hello, hmm? Aldiel Shala. The mana bomb was dropped on her city. Ronin sacrificed himself by drawing the bomb onto himself into the magical defenses to minimize the explosion while pushing Jaina through a portal. Horde forces had already infiltrated the city to set Talon free, and many of the Horde cheered on the warchief for his deeds, for his absolute victory with the use of a mana bomb. The mana bomb, so thoughtfully provided by the Blood Elves, who stood cheering with other Horde members who somehow felt that what Garrus had wrought was a good thing, had exploded over the entire city and had not just harmed its citizens and buildings, but it crushed them utterly. Tears ran down Bane's muzzle, and he made no effort to wipe them away. He stood surrounded by throngs of cheering horde, but as he looked around, he saw, illuminated by the ghostly arcane glow, faces that wore his own expression of shock and revulsion. What had happened to the war chief, who had once said honor? No matter how dire the battle, never forsake it. That war chief seems to be gone, as Garrosh has no problem with using whatever methods he saw fit. Jaina eventually returned to see the devastation of Fenimore. She reclaimed the focusing iris, and she planned to use its power to create a massive tidal wave to flood all of Orgrimmar. No one can protect you. Kill the proud Moor wench, and bring me that bomb. Your people are despicable cowards, Orc. You're nothing more than rabid dogs, and you will be put down! Brave words, mage. I'll spit in your face when you beg for mercy. You spit on mercy? Then you will have none. You want carnage? Garros will get more blood than he ever bargained for! Men, women, and children. None of them would be spared her wrath, but thankfully, Thrall and Kaligos, they were able to change their mind, and instead, she used the tidal wave to fight back against Garros' forces, including the Kraken that they had summoned from the deep. Garrus and the Horde, they had lost this battle, but the war was far from over. The war chief figured that next time they would simply have to go harder, think even bigger. While Varen and the Alliance, they repaired their fleets. Jaina, together with Kaelic, they made way to Dalaran to return the focusing Iris, which Kaelic decided to donate to the Kid and Tor. Lady Proudmoore humbly requests permission to become a novice member of the Kid and Tor, but a prophecy written by the Red Dragon Coriostras, it tells them that she should not just become a novice member, she should actually become their leader. But to choose me just based Based on this, Jaina said. Not just on this. You've always been strong, my lady. In your power and in your character, said Ava's son Reaver unexpectedly. Even when tested and tried, and when you faced both an unimaginable horror and an inconceivable temptation, and were perhaps yourself tainted by the effects of the mana bomb, you still chose a path that was fair and just, rather than vengeful and dark. 
it is, you must admit, unlikely that anything else will ever tempt you so again. And I do not think there stands among us anyone who, were he or she in your place, could have done better. Indeed, we might not have done even half so well. Jaina decided to accept the position to lead the Kitten Tour, but she told them that she continued to believe, as many of them also did, that this world cannot be safe while Garrus Hellscream is the leader of the Horde. She would be proven right, as during Mr. Pandaria, both the Allies and Horde, they found a way to the land of Pandaria, and Garrus went around searching for more power to add to the Horde's arsenal. General, you and your best veterans will pave our way. Storm the shore and paint this new continent red! However, we'll save the events of Pandaria and beyond for next week, as we'll finish up the storyline and I'll also reply to some of the comments that I've received. That will be for next week though, so for now, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time guys, see ya!